What's your sort of philosophy on the creative funnel, essentially? Good, good. Yeah. Um, so basically, you got to understand why do people actually buy products? Now, there's a few, there's a few, there's a few different people. First of all, sometimes people will buy a product just because they need the product. Okay, if it's like a kitchen tool, right? If it cuts a cucumber fast, and, oh cool, it's a cucumber slicer, I need that. I slice cucumbers. Right, that's all, that's all you need. They, sometimes people don't really care about the brand of the cucumber slicer. You know, if yeah. it's a $10 or $100 cucumber slicer, they'll probably buy the $10 one. But on the other aspect, there's products that people don't buy, they essentially the product, but they buy the story or brand behind the product. That's what you see with apparel a lot. That's why Louis Vuitton, people buy a $1,000. I'll leave it on yep. shirts. That's why people buy a forty thousand dollar Rolex watch, you know, because they see the story behind the brand, totally. and that's essentially the route that you. That uh, those are the two different routes. N there's not one or good uh, one that's good or bad. There's just two different routes. Now the story, the, what, I'm, what we're actually talking about with the creative funnel side is that try to imagine this as you're selling a product, but you're not only selling the product, you're selling a story behind it. So you can be selling a shirt or a ring or a specific piece of jewelry, and you can buy it for $3 from AliExpress, but you can sell it for $10, or you can even sell it for $300, depending on what you have behind it. Now, a good way to actually showcase this is look at websites that just have a bunch of random general products, and a website that has a very, very optimized website. The pictures look HD, the website is optimized, it looks good, there's a story behind it. Let's say your hat, right? Now you have this hat, it's an iStack Sick training hat. hat. Yeah. Let's say, uh, let's say iStack was a global brand, okay? Uh, like multi-billion dollar brand. Okay, which will, it will probably get yeah, there in, get the, next, there. Oh, in yeah. the next week or two, yeah. right? <laughs> but yeah, let's say it's a multi-billion dollar brand. Now let's say somebody sees that and it's like, oh cool, that's a cool hat. Now on a general store where there's like a bunch of random products like pillows and hats and maybe like some statues, you can sell that hat for $10, yeah. right? But let's say we're, we're gonna take that same exact hat and we're gonna create an entire store around that hat. We're gonna talk about the specifics of it. We're gonna have a zoom in on like the material. We're gonna talk about the quality, the weight of it, yep. show testimonials of that hat. The, the site is so optimized and like it's, 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 it looks literally like a piece of art. Yeah. You could probably sell a hat for $500 and it's the exact same hat. The only difference is that here you're just like trying to sell the hat, but on the other one, you're not really trying to sell the hat, you're trying to sell the story yeah. behind the hat. That's like Swatch, right? Like the famous story of that is Swatch. Swatch, Swatch right. watches came out and they, they're, they're the cheapest watches to make mm -hmm. and they were selling them for 15 bucks or something like that and nobody exactly. wanted them. They're like, it was these zany. Then all of a sudden they started putting them in glass cases in an all white exactly. storeroom yeah. and everything like that and they bumped the price up to $100 and right. that's what they became exactly. worth to people. Apple, Apple do the same thing. Movement have actually started a cool thing as well. And another example that I can give you is uh, like one of our e-commerce brands, we're relying on a lot of our sales and our traffic, not essentially from sending people to the product page, but from creating viral videos. Now the thing about a viral video is that if you create a viral video, that the purpose of it, other than brand awareness, is that you're getting a lot of very cheap CPMs. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is that, let's say we're running an ad, just a front-end product ad. You have every dollar that you pay is going on advertising. People aren't really sharing it. You know? So if you're paying, uh, you're paying like, uh, let's say a dollar to show it to, to 1,000 people, then you have a dollar CPM, right? You're paying $10 to show it to 1,000 people, your CPM is at $10. People are not sharing or commenting because it's just a, basically a product. They, they, they see it, they don't see a reason to share it, they're just like either buy or not buy. But if you create a viral video around the product, and by viral I mean it can be entertaining or co comedic or people really react well to it, mm -hmm. they'll have an incentive to share. Now if we create a viral video and let's say one out of every three people share our video, that essentially means that we're going to pay the CPM, regular CPM on actually showing this, this um, ad to people, but we're going to get another 33% free CPM on all the people that share it. Yeah. And actually, it's beyond that because the second somebody shares the video, it's exposed to thousands of their friends. So on a regular product, I'll be paying a dollar for, let's say $10 to reach 1,000 people. On a viral video, I might be paying 50 cents to show it to a thousand people because of how many times it's shared. And it's self-fulfilling because fa every time it's shared, Facebook is giving you a thumbs up towards, much, you know, yeah. your, your cost could potentially come exactly. down the more, the more people right, love right, your right. content too. So that's how, that's how we look at it and that's how a lot of people should look at it. When you actually create viral content and you create like something that people have an incentive to share, in the end of the day, yeah, you're creating brand awareness, but in simple terms, you're just getting free advertising because of people sharing it and commenting and share, like showing it to their friends and stuff. Yeah. So there's a lot of different aspects with it, but once you start to look at it as more of an art form and less of a way to make money, that's where you're gonna grow a business from even making $100,000 a month to making $10 million a month, for example. So I think we can also announce here, we've got uh, Ben Malal also is involved in e-commerce all-star secrets. We've got been on board uh, for our six part mini course to teach uh, basically an, an, an overview of, of some of his Facebook methods as well as, as some more stuff about, about creative. Uh, super excited to have him involved and you know, 
Again, if we were rounding up the, you know, the Avengers of, of e-commerce here, the all-stars, we have our uh, Captain Ecom with Nick Peroni. Uh, if you had to be an Avenger, what, uh, what would you pick, do you think? Uh, that's a good question. Um, Iron Man is pretty cool, but I, I don't like Iron Man as much as like Tony Stark. You know, he seems like a cool, cool ass dude. I'll probably be Tony Stark. Well, then I guess that would have to make you uh, Tony Scale in this case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. You got Scale Industries. Uh, he'll that be is, that's true. Showing the, both the, the social, creative, and Facebook nitty gritty, which is the most exactly. I've ever said nitty gritty in an right. interview. I still want to have an Iron Man suit, though. Uh, we're going to get you a gummy man <laughs> suit, I okay. think. I'll be fine with that. Uh, but we're super excited for, for the cool stuff we're doing with uh, Ben this summer. You can catch him at ECML as well. Uh, live in Barcelona on stage. Uh, he told me that we're going to have a rave after, so we will. Uh, I, I'm very excited about that. Uh, but thanks for coming by my yeah. mansion today. And uh, I wasn't able to make you cry on my Oprah couch, but uh, I've still got one more.